Hey, what's going on, YT? It is your girl, Leah Ray, and you're tuned into The Leah Ray Show. So, this is going to be Vlogmas number 15, and I wish I had something more festive, more positive to come to you with. <sighs> But I'm going to find the positive, though. I'm going to find the positive. Um, but sometimes life. That's all I can say. Sometimes life. And I just want to come on here and tell you this story because I just can't believe this happened. But I'm going to try to put my lashes on, too. I already put my magnetic liner on. So if you haven't seen that video, please go back in. Watch that video. But um, so weeks ago, like over a month ago, my car came up that it needed a B13 service. And I don't really know what that is, but um, apparently it has something to do with flushing the transmission fluid out and all this kind of stuff. So, um, it needed a B13 service. And um, I can't remember if this was before or after um, but anyway, we took the car to Pet Boys. I told my husband I wanted him to take my car to get a service. So he was like, come on, let's take your car over to Pet Boys. I don't think I'm going to like these lashes because they're so tiny. But I'm going to wear them anyway because after I wear these lashes, I will have worn everyone that's in the, the five pack that it came in. But um, he was like, um, let's go ahead and take your car to Pet Boys. So I was like, okay. Um, so we take the car over to Pet Boys. And they're like, um, yeah, your car needs that service. But the only thing that we're going to do is the oil change. Because there was like a crack in or something, I don't know if it was a crack or something having to do with the seal on the axles, whatever, yada, 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 right? So they were like, we're, we're not going to put the transmission fuel, you know, to flush out the transmission because it'll just start, it'll eventually leak out because apparently there was like this small crack or something not sealed or something like that having to do with the axles and all this stuff. So they were like, we were like, okay, so they did the oil change and they were like, two fix your axles now that's my work area where i do like my nails and my planning and my light so excuse that they were like to fix the axles it's going to run you like the quote on the paper was 6.99 but the manager crossed it out and wrote 6.20 like i could do it for 6.20 okay dang that one kind of sat weird can you push it up so they were like we were like okay so then we, we came home, we brought the car home, and we talked about it. And we were like, okay, so this is a 2009 Honda Civic. Why is this one not sticking over here? This is a 2009, there we go, Honda Civic. I bought the car brand new. I was, I've been the only owner on the car. Let me reiterate, it's a 2009 Honda Civic, okay? It's a Honda, bruh. So, I'm like, first of all, it's a good car. The reason why I got it was because it was a good car. And I got the car with my car, my 96 Plymouth Breeze that got me to Alabama. Uh, started smoking from the hood on my first day of work in 2009. Um, when I had actually got hired on to be a teacher. Because previous to that, I was hired on as a long-term sub to finish out the 2008-2009 year. So, mm -mm. no, I wasn't. I was on at the high school from 2008-2009. I got pink slipped after that because they lost the units. And then I got rehired in the same district at a different school. And on the way to that job, my car started smoking. And I was like, I'm down here by myself. I can't do this. I cannot have a car that's not reliable. So, um, we were just like, I got to go get another car. 
me and my best friend at the time. So I think we went to Nissan and I probably already said this story and then we went to Honda. And I was like, look, I don't have no money because I did it. Okay. I came to Alabama with $600 in my pocket, if that. And um, I was like, I don't have no money, but what I do have is a credit score that's over 800. So I need my payments to be here and I need to walk out with a car today. And that's what happened. So I got that 2009 brand new Honda Civic and my car payment was 317 and I paid that mug off, okay? In the allotted time, was it six or seven years? Okay, so I paid the car off. So I haven't had a car payment in years. So, but at the end of the day, I'm like, this is a Honda. This is why I got this car because I needed it to be reliable. I've had no problems out of this car. Um, I just had to recently get something like done with the brakes, replace the brakes. But I would think that after me buying that car in 2009, having to repair the brakes, that's normal. So when they said that it was uh, a cr crack or whatever they said in the, in the, in something to do with the axles and then I was going to be that much, I was like, well, me and my husband got to talking about cars and he was saying how, um, because, like, I can't, and I'm not going to edit this, y'all. So, on top of that, which I've discussed before, the paint is peeling off my car. If you don't know anything about the 2009 Honda Civic scandal, or whatever you want to call it, they sold the cars and the cars had defective paint on it. So, the paint was in a warranty when I was still paying the car off, you know, for whatever that time frame was. So, they had to repaint my car and they only did the top half of the car because that's where the paint was peeling. I don't know if they used different paint from the top and the bottom. I don't know. But they repainted the whole top, I think the hood or whatever. It was fine. Then, the paint started peeling off again. And I think when I went to... Um, get the car repainted, they sent me to uh, a body shop that they work with and they repainted it and I'm pretty sure they use the same paint. So they repainted the car, the car, the paint started peeling off the car again, but it was out of warranty. So my car looks like it's from the 1970s, okay, because of the way the paint is peeling off the car. But I don't care though, because it's a good car and it runs it ran fine. So I was kind of, I had priced out what it would be to, this is before, this is before we took it. Yeah, now it's all coming back to me. So before we took it to get the Beast 13 service, this is weeks and weeks ago, I was like, talking to Adrian, I was like, what should we do? Should we get this car painted or should I just get a new car because it is a 2009? And he was like, well, um, Let's price out and see how much it costs to get painted. So I went on the Mako or Waco, what is it, Mako? The website and, and did a quote. And they were like, it was anywhere from like, like $800, $900 to $2,000, $2,500 to get it painted. I was like, dang, I didn't know it was going to be that much to get it painted. I mean, like, I didn't know that because I swear I'd be seeing deals where they be running specials and stuff, get your car painted for this amount. So I was like, let me just put the word out there on Facebook. So you know how you say, I'm looking for somebody to paint my car. Anybody know any people that paint cars? So two of people on my friends list recommended the same person that are not connected to each other. So I was like, oh, this dude must be a legit. So I hit him up. I sent him pictures of the car and I was just telling him to give me a ballpark figure. And I told him what happened to the car. So he said 2000. So that's when I realized that that was like around the standard price. Like it's probably going to cost you anywhere from probably like $1,200 to $2,000 plus to get your car repainted. So I was like, dang, do I want to drop two bands on my 2009 Honda Civic? That's such a great car to get repainted just for cosmetic reasons. Or do I want to keep this two bands? And the reason why I was contemplating keeping the two bands was because my dream car, wait for it, is a 1989 Jeep Wrangler. And I know people be having dream cars like, oh, I want a, a, a Jag. I want a, a Mercedes. That's just not my vibe. I want a 1989 
Jeep Wrangler, stick shift, which I don't know how to drive, take the doors off right to the beach. Like, that's what I want. Like, that is my favorite car. Not even the new ones. I don't want the new one. I want that 19, well, it's like 1989 or 91. I want that. And those are $6,000 today. So I was like, if I drop two bands to get my car painted, that's a third of the price of my Jeep Wrangler that I want as my toy car. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not going to be the family car. That's just going to be, you know, as you as you become adult, some, some of the things that are, like, your toys are more expensive. So, my little toy that I want, just something that I want, is that car. And it's 6000 And I know if I walk into the dealership with five bands in cash, I could get that car for five bands. Because cash walks. So, I was just like, pause on that idea, right? Then I needed a B13 service. Weeks and weeks later, I needed a B13 service. Um, so took it in there and they were like that. Okay. So then, um, we said that we were going to go ahead and do it. Right. Because I was like, look, this is, we discussed, I'm like, look, this is a 2009 Honda Civic. It's a great car. I've had zero problems out of this car. It is natural for a car after this amount of time. Cause what are we? 2009, 2019, 20 going on 12 years old to have some sort of work that is required. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, let's get it done. So he took it over there. And then the new quote, because we had already got like the oil change and everything was like five something. So we're like, okay, we'll do it for five something. Okay. So they told us the car was going to be ready that day. They never called us that day. We called them before they closed. Like, it was dark outside. We was like, hey, where's the car? They're like, oh, we couldn't get the part in. So they're like, we ordered the part from the part company three times, and three times they brought us the wrong part today. So we're not going to be able to get the car part until, like, Tuesday. So we were like, well, you should have never told us that it was going to be ready today. So Tuesday rolls around. They don't call us. I think Adrian calls back. Then he didn't call back on Tuesday. He called back, like, Wednesday, Thursday. Maybe he's like, yo, where's the car? They're like... We still ain't got the part, yada, yada, yada. So then we were talking to this dude named Brandon. Brandon was like, I don't know what's going on. Why they ain't got this part? So Brandon did some um, research. And I don't know if that happened that Wednesday or towards the weekend, maybe Saturday, because I know Adrian spoke to them over the, that weekend too. And he was like, um, they was like, oh, because Honda made several different axles for this, the model cars that were in this range, um, this, uh, year range, instead of them just making one axle that went on all the cars, they made all these different axles. So we was trying to find the right axle. I'm like, but why can't you just put 2009 Honda Civic, whatever I got, LX, EX, whatever that is, and just be like, send me that axle. I don't know. I just feel like amateurs are work like, are these people in training that's working? Like order the right part. So, like, it rolls around, and we don't hear nothing, and it's, like, the next week or something like that. We're pushing two weeks now, and we're like, yo. So, um, wait, I don't think we talked to Brandon at that part. It wasn't until it was, like, two weeks that we talked to Brandon. We're like, yo, Brandon, this is ridiculous. So, Brandon did some research, find out that the part had to be special order and that the part that they ordered for the car was sitting on the floor in the shop. He was like, this is the part right here, but this is the wrong part. And nobody like sent it back or, you know, it just, somebody dropped the ball. <coughs> so Brandon, like we ought to get it done today. It was Saturday, <coughs> like two weeks, two weeks later, Saturday, <coughs> you don't get it done. They don't get it done. So, they finally get it done the next day. I think it was like Sunday. And he was like, they was like, you have to come get the car. So <clears throat> we roll over there Sunday. And um, I think it was Sunday. I know it was like the weekend or we were off from school something. And I got to get all my dates in order. But we get the car. The car, they took the labor off because they were wrong. So it went from being six ninety nine to three eighty two. Because the labor was like $300 or something like that. And then, because um, originally when, when Brandon called us back, he said it was going to be like $450. We was like, uh-uh, because we had all these discounts or whatever. He was like, well, that's not what I'm looking at on the paper when I rang it up today. I was like, well, that's what was quoted. Well, Adrian was like, that's what was quoted. So he was like, bring that paper in. When he brought the paper in, he um started subtracting all those discounts and it wound up being $382. Okay, so I get in a car to drive... 
out of Pep Boys lot, parking lot. I'm at the edge of the parking lot about to get onto the highway. I push the, I push the gas and I hear an explosion. Then my car starts going ee, and then smoke starts coming from the hood. I look up and I'm like, I try to push the accelerator and it won't do nothing. So I'm like, okay, I'm just about to put the car in park. And I'm like, why aren't there people running around to come save me? Because this was loud as heck. So I put the car in park, but the car won't go in park. Because when I put my took my foot off the brake, the car started rolling backwards. So I had to put the emergency brake on. So I'm like, Adrian is behind me. Why hasn't he rushed? Why isn't nobody rushing over here? So I started waving out the window. Adrian comes up on the side. I'm like, you don't hear this? And he was like, Oh, yeah, but it didn't register that that noise was coming from my car because we are in a mechanic's place. He didn't know where the noise is. We're at the mechanics. So I'm like, that's my car. I'm like, you didn't hear that explosion? He was like, no. I said, well, it just must have been loud inside the car because, you know, sometimes stuff happens to your car and you hear it very loud from the outside, but it's not that loud from the inside. I mean, you hear it loud from the inside, but it's not that loud from the outside. So... I was like, go get one of the pet boys. So the pet boy, he's like, what happened? I'm like, it exploded. The um, the 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 car started smoking. I said, it won't like go forward. It won't park. Like the gears don't work. I said, and it's leaking. And I pointed up there and I took a picture of it. He was like, oh, that's transmission fluid on the ground. So they put it back up on a lift immediately, and like three or four pet boys come out and look at it. You know what they said? They say it fell apart. The the axle that we put on there, it fell apart. We don't know. I guess it was a defaulty part. They was like, we gonna fix it. We gonna, f yeah, I know. They fix it, okay? And then I don't know when we come get back and get it. It's like another couple days or something like that. We go get the car. So Ad I'm, I'm now nervous, okay? So Adrian drives the car home and it's all right. I don't drive my car a whole lot. I go to work and I come back and I might go to the store. But <clears throat> that weekend, I was like, I'm about to go to, where did I go to Michael's or something? Yeah, I went to Michael's or something. I'm like, I'm about to go to Michael's. So I'm driving the car and it's, it's shifting weird. Okay. It wasn't that bad though, but I could, I've been driving this car. I, I, this is my car since 2009. I'm like, the car is shifting weird, but they did put new axles on it or seals or whatever. And they did do a B13 service and they flushed the transmission fluid and yada, yada, yada. So I'm like, maybe it's an adjustment period. But as I started rolling to work that next week, I noticed that it just kept getting worse and worse and worse until yesterday when I told Adrian, I was like, look, we got to take it to the, it was, it was the day before yesterday. I was like, yo, we got to take this car to the back to the pet boys. So he was like, give me the paperwork. I want to see what their warranty is on their parts and services. So I typed Adrian an email explaining to him because I hadn't even said nothing yet to him because I was just waiting to see what would happen. So I I'm like, I'm going to type this up. What's wrong with this car? And you can take it to the pet boys. So, I thought I heard something. So, Adrian takes my car to the Pet Boys with his homeboy. And when he drops it off, Adrian comes back and tells me, he's like, yo, I don't even know how you was driving that because I couldn't get that car to go over 20 miles an hour. Now, I was able to get it over 20 miles an hour when I was taking, like, Khaleesi to daycare or picking up from daycare and stuff like that because I had to hit the highway. But I only on that highway, it's only, like, 50 miles an hour right there. So, I was able to get her up. Um, but I had to play with how I was accelerating. Like when I would push the gas, it would not go over like gear one, one would not shift the gear two, unless like, like it would, but I would have to like play with the gas. You know what I'm saying? To kind of get it to turn over. Then it would catch. And then when it went to gear two, I mean, two to three, it would like, if I was like just tapping on the gas just to excel because I'm not hard on my car. It would be doing like this, right, when it was time to change gears. But if I hit the gas, it would just go boom, and it would change over. And then it would do the same thing to three to four, and I ain't never get up to four to five because, like, those highways, it's only, like, 45, 50 miles an hour. So they're, like, so, okay, so we take we take the car back to the well he drops it off at pet boy so now they're like brandon calls us back brandon's cool brandon like basically there's like a crack in the transmission now and he was like you know the best thing to do would just be to put a new transmission in there 
Brandon, like, he was like, let me, he said, like, I didn't work on the car. Let me get the person who worked on the car, yada, yada, yada. So you mean to tell me I bought my perfectly functioning, but for a B3, but for a routine service car into your shop and when it's all said and done within the warranty of your parts and services, I need a new transmission. It's a Honda, bruh. It's a mother flipping Honda, my dude. So the dude got on the Cody. Cody got on the phone. Adrian was playing it through the Bluetooth. And Cody was saying, like, yeah, you know, sometimes you don't know when your transmission is going to go out. You know, I had to replace my transmission on my car twice. And Cody was saying, you know, I'm not saying this is what happened. But, you know, when we put these new parts on this old transmission and it started running, you know, the transmission maybe wasn't used to these new parts. And it was overworking itself and it just went. And sometimes it just happened. So Adrian was like, so you telling me it was happenstance that the transmission went out? So I chimed in and I was like, Cody... Now, when that car exploded, when I was in your parking lot, it was a loud explosion. And I realized it was louder to me because I was in, but I heard it. And that trans, and, and, the, and the axle fell apart, like you said. First of all, it was a pop, explosion, pop, whatever you want to call it. And that axle fell apart and that transmission leaked out onto the pavement. You don't think that caused some kind of damage? He hesitated. That's how I knew. That's how I knew. So basically what I'm hearing, without you saying it, because you're not going to put Pet Boys liable, is that your actions precipitated what happened. Because never have I ever taken my car, any car that I've ever had, to a mechanic and left out with it in worse condition than it was when I dropped it off. Y'all did a repair. A janky repair. It fell apart before I even got out the parking lot. It exploded. It popped. It smoked from the hood. Transmission fluid, fluid leaked out. And you guys did not do a thorough investigation as to what could have possibly happened as a result of that. And now there's a crack in the transmission. And now that and, and, and now it was just leaking transmission all over the place. It wasn't even leaking transmission when I brought it to you guys this last time because it sat in the parking lot and I drove it here and I drove it there. Wasn't no transmission fuel, fuel, fluid on the ground. So now it's just cr it's crazy leaking fluid. Mm -mm, y'all did something. And y'all don't want to take responsibility. And I get it because it's your job. But I told Adrian... So he was saying that and, and Adrian was like, look, this just ain't this ain't right just to, to, to have to get a new transmission. I said, Adrian, look, I don't know what this is. I don't know what's going on because I know that we had already prior to everything happening discussed me getting a new car. I know that I was I paid all my credit cards off as of was it September? or October, September or October, because I had made a plan from that previous year to pay all my credit. I am I have no credit card debt, y'all. I paid off all my consumer debt with exception of student loans, which may or may not be consumer debt because of just the legal technicalities of it, because I don't think it was consumer debt, because it was, yeah, anyway. But with respect to my student loans, I have no debt. And you know, like, who counts student loans? <laughs> but my point is, I'm trying to find the positive. Because just because this car blew up, to me, okay, so this is what needs to happen. I'm going to have Adrian write down the dates of every time we took the car over there when he called yada, yada, yada. Because he'll be able to write down them dates. Then we're going to call the district office. And we're going to talk to a district manager. We're going to call corporate. Because... I feel like they should replace the transmission because it was their actions that precipitated this whole thing. It's not me trying to get nothing for free, but I bought you a working car that was not leaking transmission fluid. And now we can't get my car above 20 miles an hour and the gears don't shift properly and it's leaking transmission fluid. And the only person that's worked on the car is y'all twice because y'all did the faulty repair at first and then you had to redo it. And it exploded. So I'm thinking if a car makes a pop like that and explodes, something happened to it. So we need to um, fight this.
but we also need to go get the car. We need to fight it while it's within warranty. It's a 90 day warranty. We got a few months to do this. And so I'm thinking like, bring it. We're going to do this. We will shop around. We will shop around because the Christmas break is coming up. We're going to have time. We'll go test drive some cars and yada, yada. I did not want a new car, y'all. I don't want a new car. And I don't, I'm not going to a car lot to get a used car. The only thing that I will get is a certified pre-owned from a dealership. That's it. I'm not getting no buy here, pay here. I'm not doing that. That's just not something I'm doing because I don't, I don't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like if I needed a car and I, I only had, like I got to, you know, I, I, I just can't, like I, I got to buy a car for $2,500 because I just can't make a payment. Like I could make a car payment, but I don't want to make a car payment. And I also said that if I was going to get another car, I wasn't going to get another car. I'm going to get an SUV and I already know that payment is going to be more. But I don't know if this is God like, you need to get a new car or it's just a a uh, uh, something that I, we're going through right now because despite it all this only happened like this hit the fan within the last 24 hours and I'm just thinking like um like what what what, what I don't know what we're supposed to do here so I prayed about it and I'm not gonna rush you get what I'm saying because maybe God was having me pay my sinking funds off and attacking them when I did so that I would have money free to make a car payment. Or maybe he was just helping me get out of debt. I mean, so that something else or whatever, you know? But in the midst of all this, I am, I have found positive and it is work. It is work to focus on the positive. The positive is that I can still get to work and we still have a vehicle. It's not a burden because Adrian and I work at the same job. So we can just carpool together, which is what we did for those few weeks that they had the car anyway. So that's the positive. I'm thankful for that. It's a blessing to be able to have or have had two vehicles. A lot of people only have one vehicle, but it's also a blessing to work on the same campus as your spouse because then, you know, if anything happens, you guys can still both get to work. So I am going to repeatedly focus on that and not think about the fact that this happened over the holidays. Not that we were going anywhere, it's just like a damper on the mood and I'm gonna do everything I can to get this situation rectified to where I can get this car fixed and it won't cost us anything because I really do not believe that it was happenstance nor do I believe that it was our fault. I think it was their fault. So anyway, guys, um, go ahead, leave in the comment section what you think about this situation and happy Vlogmas.